we're here at the uh, remains of the Pamlico stamp mill. I thought I'd walk everybody through this so they could get an idea of the, the flow sheet of the mill. This big timber in front of me is actually part of the remains of the trestle that would have uh, uh, supported the wagons of ore as they came down from the mines. The road running up the canyon to my right uh, runs up toward the Lepanta mine which reportedly produced about 50,000 ounces of gold. The wagons of ore would have come down that road, loaded behind me, and then out onto the, uh, the trestle and dumped the uh, uh, wagon load of ore into the, uh, the coarse ore bin. Then they'd have gone on down and back up the canyon empty, uh, because when you're pulling a wagon with a horse, it's a lot easier to go downhill with a load than uphill with a load. Uh, very much in the same fashion, the wagons of ore from the uh, Pamlico mines, uh, the, well, the Pamlico mine, Good Hope, Gold Bar, and some of the other mines uh, over in that direction would have come down from those mines, dumped the ore into the, uh, the mill, and then uh, uh, the rock would have gone on through the mill circuit. Importantly, this mill was constructed about 1898, and so it, uh, it operated until about 1926 or 1928, somewhere in there. So this was a fairly long-lived district in the early history of Nevada mining. This mill would have been a, a fairly sizable mill for that day. Um, this was a, uh, uh, would have been a uh, four-battery four mill. Uh, would, each uh, battery has five stamps, so it would have been a 20-stamp mill. A 20-stamp mill is capable of treating 75 to 100 tons a day. Um, as we go through the, uh, the mill, one of the unique things about this mill, many of the old stamp mills uh, used to uh, treat their ore with uh, mercury and amalgamation. To the best of our knowledge, this mill was built as a cyanide mill. It would have been one of the very first cyanide mills in the state of Nevada. It was just about the time that cyanide treatment really came in. And uh, uh, we see no, no evidence of any uh, amalgamation process here and we actually see a lot of uh, remnants, uh, such as the various thickeners and everything, that would have been used in the, uh, the cyanide process. So it's uh, an excellent example of one of the first cyanide mills in, uh, in Nevada. The, uh, as, as we look, um, originally the trestle would have come out level with the road behind me. Um, these big timbers would have supported a, a plank road and then the wagons would have been able to dump their ore into the, uh, the mill, uh, the uh, coarse ore bins. And by raising and lowering control doors at the bottom of the coarse ore bins, they would have fed the, uh, that coarse ore down into the uh, uh, stamp mills. Um, each stamp typically weighed between 1,500 and 2,000 pounds and was raised and uh, dropped by a series of cams attached to either a steam engine or an early internal combustion engine. We'll walk on down through the, uh, the mill and I can point out various aspects of the mill where we can see it at, that, uh, at those stages. We're here right at the top of the coarse ore bin of the, the Pamlico mill. You can see the metal lined uh, ore bin. Ore would have gone in here uh, to be fed into the mill. The reason the uh, old timers lined the mill with the sheet iron was to keep the, uh, the fines that contained a lot of the gold in rather than let them shift uh, through the uh, through the boards. You can see the, the size of some of these timbers. A lot of these timbers would have been cut out of the Sierras, especially around Tahoe. Uh, this mill was built actually in the waning days of the Comstock load, so it's uh, uh, you know part of definitely part of Nevada's mining history. More than likely these these timbers almost certainly came out of the, uh, the Sierras. And uh, once the ore was dumped in here, uh, it would feed by gravity down through the control doors. Uh, you can uh, see those down at the very bottom of the, uh, the coarse ore bin and then into the uh, stamp batteries uh, below. This, uh, from the size of this, this ore bin would have probably held up to 40 tons of crushed ore at any one time. So to treat 75 to 100 tons a day, they would have had an almost continuous flow of wagons uh, full of ore coming down from these various mines. Behind me you can see the, the walkway where the millwrights would have been able to tend the, uh, the various ore bins uh, or the uh, chutes coming out of the coarse ore bin. There are at least four ore chutes that you can see going across there uh, depending on which mine was producing the ore. They would have been pulling ore out of uh, one or more of those chutes at any one time. And then uh, 
the millwrights would have also been able to service the drive shaft and all the cams lifting the uh, stamps in the stamp mill. Uh, they needed to keep those well greased in order to prevent or minimize the wear on those. Uh, there would have been a, a very large diameter, probably a four to five inch diameter solid steel shaft with great big cams that ran through those uh, curved cutouts in those big posts there behind me. And as the shaft rotated, it would suck the ore in uh, through hydraulic action. And then as it fell, it, uh, it crushes the ore because it each stamp uh, would raise and fall uh, typically 20 to 40 times a minute and the uh, uh, stamp weighing about uh, 2,000 pounds falling a uh, typical distance of about 18 inches would, uh, would have a lot of force and would be easily able to crush the ore. Most of the uh, ore here probably would have been ground to somewhere around 40 mesh, so relatively fine grinding. Okay, we're standing here at what would have been the power plant for the Pamlico mill. This would have been either a large steam engine or a, a very early internal combustion engine that spun a large wooden wheel. Um, there's the remnants of one down below the mill here that we can see later. Um, that uh, uh, wheel would have had a large belt on it, a big flat uh, drive belt that would have gone up to that shaft I described. In turn, that rotated the shaft, which uh, rotated the cams, raised and dropped the, uh, the stamps. These great big bolts would have been used to anchor the, uh, the engine down. And kind of a, a very interesting technicality, most of the, uh, these large bolts in these old mills were bedded in molten sulfur. The molten sulfur is uh, flexible when it's first poured in the, uh, the holes so that you can align the bolts exactly to match the, uh, the bolt holes on the uh, engine without having to have that uh, cast in concrete uh, from the start. And then over a, a period of a few weeks, that molten sulfur crystallizes and becomes very hard and anchors the bolt firmly in the concrete. We're now standing down in what would have been the uh, coarse crushing circuit of the Pamlico mill. Actually, this was the crushing and grinding circuit all in one. I am standing in what would have been the battery box. The, uh, the battery boxes were large, thick cast iron troughs that would have come up almost to my waist. And the, the backside and the, the sides in between these massive timbers would have been solid cast iron. There was a, a aperture to put in a screen in the front. And depending on the size of the screen, that determined the size of the uh, crushed ore that would go out of the battery box and then on into the, the processing circuit. And that, that's how they controlled their, uh, their uh, grind size in these, uh, in these old stamp mills. These Great big bolts that you see uh, at my feet are uh, probably inch and a half diameter bolts and they're anchored into this uh, giant concrete footing. Um, uh, those would have bolted the battery boxes to the concrete uh, and they, they have those large bolts and this tremendously large concrete footing to withstand the, uh, the pounding from those great big stamps. A tremendous amount of energy uh, would go into these things. And then the ore would splash out and go into a uh, collection trough and then on to, into the, uh, the processing circuit. Um, as I uh, mentioned earlier, the processing circuit here probably was a cyanide circuit. Um, there are the remnants of a large drum classifier out here, and uh, uh, we see uh, uh, there are also the remnants of uh, plate uh, thickeners uh, on the property. So it's almost certain that, uh, that this was a, a cyanide mill. And according to the information I've been able to uh, scour from the historical records, this mill operated from its construction in, uh, in 1898 up to around 1926.